Hello, Acron fans, and welcome to the second exhibition match between Chris Haberth and Perlox on Island. They played a series of three games, and I already casted one that's on the channel, but this is game two. So this game, Chris is going for CISO instead of Vec Gear, as he did last time, and Perlox, I'm assuming, is going for Grekum as well, as last time. Let's see, he is going back to choose his race, we'll find out shortly. He is, in fact, going Grekum. So it is going to be a CISO versus Grekum matchup. This is a... Much more common matchup. We've seen, we've seen a lot of it just because there's been a lot of curiosity about CISO versus Grekum balance. And in this case, I don't think it's because of that. I think it's because Chris is a newer player. He's probably one play CISO since that's more familiar for him from the campaign. The first campaign is CISO, the second one's Vekgear, and the third one's Grekum. And it's a. With Perlox, he is a bit more experienced and he's already. Decided he likes Grekum just from having played it a lot, so this isn't surprising at all for Perlox. But just saying for Chris, he probably is more comfortable with CISO than with Vekir. Anyway, Chris is going for a standard 6 RPs and getting an importer very quickly afterwards. He's not going for more RPs before getting the importer, so probably going to go for a more harassment oriented strategy. On a map like Island, which is quite small, this isn't a bad idea, since the harassment could actually be effective. Perlox, on the other hand, is about 30 seconds down from where Chris is, and he is setting up his Octos for RPs, and also walking his tribe down towards the South Expansion, which is what he did in the first game as well. So it'll be interesting to see what Chris does to respond to this. Chris in his first game was building a lot of Veer class units. He was Vec gear, building a lot of Veer class units, those are the infantry. They aren't super powerful, not a lot of players actually use Veer class units a lot. Though, as I mentioned in that replay, he was playing against Nail a lot, Nail was using the Veers as a handicap strategy, so I'm suspecting that he decided to go Veers because that's what he was seeing a lot of. It didn't work out very well, but it was actually worked out, it worked out better than I expected, just on paper. Or at least, it worked out better than I expected given what we've been discussing in IRC and on forums and such. Didn't work out ultimately. So now he's going for CISO, getting a factory early on, so likely to get vehicles rather than go for mass infantry. And jumping back to see what's going on with the SOP and Arcticus, his special ups does see that Perlox is playing Grekum, so Chris knows that Perlox is playing Grekum. He doesn't know that Perlox has shifted over to the South Expansion yet. He will find out pretty soon, though, since the Green Time Wave carries the change in the Triad. So the Triad, of course, is near the South. Perlox, about 30 seconds down from Chris, is building more an Octo for his Triad, and also building more Octos for RPs. So Perlox going for very fast expansion, while Chris is not expanding yet, which is a little bit unusual. CISO has a really easy time expanding because Marines can build RPs and build other buildings to support RPs. They have a really easy time expanding. I'm a bit surprised that Chris is not going for it, and it's kind of to his detriment that he isn't. Anyway, Perlox is sending his Arcticus in, just like he did the last time as well. He's sending his Arcticus in, looks like he's not... Uh, judging by the movement, he's sending it to the Southeast Expansion more than to Chris's main base. Chris now getting more RPs at the 313 mark, getting 3 QP RPs. A little bit late still. Also setting up his marine. It looks like he's probably going to be setting, setting up an expansion towards the northeast. He has some ATHCs coming out for harassment, but he doesn't have any other units coming in. He doesn't have any other construction buildings coming in, or like I said, any expansions yet, but I'm guessing this marine will be used to expand. And Perlox, he is taking some damage on his RPs to the special ops. The south base, we haven't seen it update yet. The red time wave is coming, which will update what's going on in the south base. So Perlox is building a reef in the south base. He has his Arcticus between the south base and the southeast base, and he doesn't have any attack force coming in for per, or to attack Chris yet. Perlox actually has two Articuses, and also more RPs in that base. He is a minute down from Chris, and when he is, that's when he's building that Articus, building up another Faro to make up for that Articus construction, and getting advanced structures. So we'll be able to get a Spire and build air units very quickly, or get domes if we wanted to. Might go for a dome rush, but I kind of doubt it. Chris sending his ATHCs to harass. He actually is going for the south base of the ATHCs. See, at the present, he is going for the south base, probably either suspecting that it's there or realizing that it's there. Probably suspecting, though, because, like I said, this happened last game. He sees there's no triad in this base, so he's got to know something's up. And he does see the Articus that's in there. Nice way of blocking off. Perlox managed to block off the ATHC coming in. Chris is going to have to pay attention to that, realize what's going on. And Chris has actually jumped back a couple minutes. Perlox has also jumped back that far. He is about half a minute down from where Chris is now. At the 2.30 mark, continuing to build up. He actually is... Oh, setting up his, standing up his tribe, moving a bit more forward. No, that's just the... Per, sorry, that's the far that he's using to build the Arcticus. Never mind that. Back for the advanced structures. He 
<laughs> is seeing what Chris is up to, but he doesn't seem to be changing too much. He's just... No, that's Arcticus was moving out here, so Perlux isn't doing anything much different here in the past far I can see so far. But Chris, he has those harassment forces. Actually, no way, this is different. The Arcticus is in fact staying moving. It's not it's not holding up at this particular point in, the, in between the bases. It is moving towards Chris's base scouted out specifically. And the Arcticus will be able to see the attack coming in, but it is... No, the ATC is going back. It won't be able... To, oh, shoot. The ATC will not be able to see the south base. Chris won't be able to actually damage it at all. Which is a bit of a shame, because that's where Perlox is mainly located. Now he's sending his ATC back to destroy the Arcticus. Which is a bit of a shame, because that Arcticus is not really that... Anyway, kids, it's a problem that Chris sees what Perlox is up... Sorry, Perlox sees what Chris is up to, and Chris does not see what Perlox is up to. But Chris does not see what Perlox is up to, and that's hugely important. Incidentally, Chris has built five more LCRPs and a factory towards his northeast base, but Perlox has quite a few more resources in stock, and he does now have a... Re and second roof gun, because a Spire... He has everything he needs to start building air units and really tear apart Chris. He does not have gate tech, however, but he does have enough of everything else to just do a ton of damage. Once he gets the resources to do it, though, he doesn't have a whole lot of LC right now at the 422 mark. At the 527 mark, we see that Chris has built a macrofab. He does have his ATHC going towards the south base. Finally, actually going to be able to deal some damage to it. Also, Special Ops has dealt quite a lot of damage in the main base. Prolix's main is taking a lot of damage. The main reason why he doesn't have a whole lot of LC is that he doesn't have his LC RPs in the main base actually doing much, because he abandoned that, essentially. And the Arcticus Perlox is going to be able to see the Northeast expansion. He's going to be able to see that Chris has this expansion. So he's going to know exactly what Chris is up to. Chris is aware of Perlox's south base. He's not exactly aware of everything that's in it. He doesn't know about the Spire or anything like that. Actually, at this point in time, the Spire hasn't propagated towards it, but still, he doesn't know really what's going on at this point in time. He does have a frigate coming in. Not a bad idea, given that typically goes are popular and air units are likely to be coming up soon. Perlox, about a minute down from here, is not building up air units. He's building up more RPs. Chris has actually managed to, by harassing these main RPs, slow down Perlox's construction. So it's not a bad idea for Chris to have done. Chris really managed to do a lot of damage here. Though it looks like the Octos will be coming in and won't be able to come in in time. We still have almost all the RPs destroyed, so that Special Ops did a great job destroying those RPs. Perlox has to make up for it. Now, Chris... What Chris needs to do now is take advantage of his resources, build up a ton of RPs, just expand across the map like mad. He isn't doing that. Bit of a shame he's not doing that, but that's the biggest thing he needs to do. Build more factories and macrofabs and importers as well. Just explode. He has so many resources he can easily explode from here, and he's not doing that. Building a ton of Mar tanks would be a great idea too. Like frigates and Mar tanks, tearing apart the space, Chris would be able to just destroy this in no time. So I'm a bit surprised he hasn't gone and done this. Perlox is about a minute and a half down from here. He's at the 623 mark. This is about the same time that. Well, the Arcticus was getting attacked and being destroyed. And it looks like Perlox is setting up more LCRPs. And now getting... He is getting chronoporting. He will be able to chronoport back units. At the 647 mark. Really important point in time to note. And Chris, of course, attacking at the present. About the 754 marks when he started attacking. Or 750 mark when he started attacking. With the Tornad and ATHC. I'm not sure where that frigate went off to. It looks like it is... Well, it doesn't look like it actually exists anymore. He decided to undo that and change it for Mar Tanks. Yes, wonderful. He's going for Mar Tanks. He's also getting more Tornads. He does need that Frigate, though, in case air units do come in. But no air units have come up yet, though, like I said, Perlox is about a minute down from here. A lot could happen in that minute, but it doesn't look like he's actually going for that. It looks like he's going for base class units. And a bunch of Faros, too. I'm quite surprised at this turn of events. I'm really surprised he isn't going for air units because... Okay, I'm not totally surprised he doesn't have a lot of LC. He does not have a lot of LC. That really limits what you can get. That being said... He'd do a lot better with far with Seppi pods. Not far pods, but Seppi pods would do great here. ATCs are not anti are not, are okay anti air. Mars are terrible anti air. Tornads are not great anti air, and Seppi pods are awesome anti air. So they just tear everything apart. Instead of the Faros, that is just because those Faros. That's a lot of that is about like that was what eight Faros. So that's that would be about 360 LC. That's a lot of money. That could have gone to a couple Seppi pods. I'm just surprised he hasn't done that. Anyway, Chris is actually now the 726 mark. He is dropped back behind, and he sees those Faros coming in. He is... Looks like he may have... No, he's not aborting the attack yet. He's keeping it going, and Prolux has actually chronoported back. He has sent back a chronoported set of units. The Faros being chronoported back to attack. It won't... Well, we'll see how it actually works out. I honestly am not sure. The blue time move is the real important thing to watch, though. Once that... Once stuff happens there, we'll know what's going on. Anyway, Chris, like I said, has a ton of resources, can really use it, but isn't using it as well as he could be. 
more RPs would be the best option right about now. Just expand across the map like mad. He is harassing Explorer across the map. We've seen him do this before, actually. This is the 819 mark, which is when he started attacking before. And Chronoport Departure. So the blue time wave has now passed the Chronoport Arrival. It will be able to propagate that arrival, and we'll see what's going on. It looks like Perlox is going past this point again. He does have actually another Fire One Seppi going towards the north base, so likely an expansion towards there, although it's a bit risky with the amount of LC he has. It's not a terribly bad idea. Though at the same time, Mars... Actually, no, it's a good idea, because these Mara tanks and Tornad, that could easily tear apart this base. The chronoporting will make a difference, and Chris actually is noticing, noticing chronoporter Farapods coming in, attacking his Macrofab before any of the Martanks come in, so the Martanks are in jeopardy. They will likely never have existed, and there's nothing to stop these Farapods. And it's one of the reasons why I'm thinking Chris really should have expanded. He has tons of Elsa he can easily expand, because if he expanded, he would be able to actually have some insurance against this. He wouldn't have to worry about the Faros destroying everything. He'd just be able to just build from a bunch of different macro fabs, and at least he'd have some of his units to be able to destroy what's in this base. But now, Perlox has managed to completely Chrono Rush him out, and not even Chrono Rush, but just Chrono Port him out, and tear him to shreds with their Chrono Porting. So those Faros have done a great job. These Mar tanks are pretty much doomed. There's nothing they can actually do. They they don't exist anymore. Chris is trying to get Gate Tech, desperately trying to get Gate Tech. Yes, he, he has a fair amount of time to do it, but he needs to actually propagate the present. That that is, he's running out of time. He only has about 30 seconds, 30 metaseconds left before it's way too late and he can't do anything about it. And he's not taking advantage of this time. He is actually jumping back, not even bothering with the present anymore. He is trying to destroy these Faros, but these Faros have already chronoported back and they aren't doing anything. So those Faros have paid for themselves many times over. Completely destroying Chris's base. And Chris appears to be giving up on the chronoporting idea. He does not have it resourced. The present time that he had to actually chronoport stuff back and use it, that's long gone. He has no way of actually making use of any of this. So he is trying to do what he can to harass Perlox, but Perlox has already done his job. There is nothing really that Chris can do right now. Chris has no Marines. He has no... He has a factory. Actually, no, he does have Marines. He does have a factory. He does have importers coming in. So he's not completely dead. But he's up against the wall and is a very will have a very hard time getting back into the game from here. Like I said, he has enough resources to do so, but he has to take advantage of that. Which is a real shame. Because if he had he well now it's a far pod coming in as well. If he had, he'd have a much easier time dealing with the Faros and just bouncing back from this loss. Because yeah, sure he's lost the main base, but he had so many resources in the bank, it doesn't make a difference. Assuming he actually rebuilds everything, but not just rebuilds everything, but builds past this. Gets the production capacity he could use, he really could use it too, to destroy these Faros, destroy the Farapod, and just, even with chronoporting, make it impossible to be destroyed. But he's not going for that, and Perlox, tearing apart his RPs, most of them actually have been, most of the crates have been drained out anyway, but they are, actually this one's still pretty full, about two-fifths full. And now we'll see likely more chronoporting back from this Farapod, and the Faros, the Farapod going back to this expansion to just tear it apart. Yes, there it goes, the Farapod going back. We'll be able to tear apart this expansion once this blue time wave comes along. So Chris up against the wall and likely be losing his last expansion in the unplayable past. It's a bit of a shame. But like I said, he really needed to expand a lot more. He just had so much in the bank. He could he could expand twice and have no problems both holding it and using the resources to get more units, to get just a massive military and completely obliterate Perlox. While Perlox, of course, has enough resources now, but he had... There was a large window at the beginning of the game where the Special Ops was destroying Perlox's RPs, and Perlox really didn't have enough to deal with it. And it looks like the Chronoport Departure may have actually been cancelled. I'm not sure if that's an accident or what, but it looks like the Farpod is not actually Chronoporting back right now. It is in the Implodable Pass, but it's not... It seems to have been stopped, so I don't know if Perlox is trying to go for a Paradox, or an Echo, or... Perma... Well, I guess a Perma would be the only thing, really. And no, he is not in fact going for this. E Actually, there he goes. Okay, now he is likely to be chronoporting back, and he has chronoport back to Farapod. This will probably be a correct chronoport back, and will actually be consistent on the timeline. But yeah, that is, man, that is a terrible position for Chris. Because like I said, he had this game. He could very easily have taken this game, but he didn't actually take advantage of the resources he had and the production capacity he could have had. That was really his big problem, was he didn't have the production capacity. Now he does have Gate Tech, and he does have 
Well, I know Chronoporter. He has a Teleporter, but he could get a Chronoporter. Still kind of too late, though. He is getting a Chronoporter, actually. Looks like he's planning to try to Chronoport some units back and hopefully basically bootstrap his expansion, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think he's going to be able to save it. It would be a paradox at best, and that at that point, it's 50% chance of staying alive, assuming that no one else tries to interfere with it further. And like I said, three minutes ago, his base is completely destroyed. Like, completely destroyed. Everything is gone. I, he really doesn't have much of a chance. All he has is the Special Ops and ATHC, and neither of them can be used to rebuild anything. So there is no way for Chris to get out of this. Even with chronoporting, there's no way for him out of this. This is this is a foregone conclusion. The best he can do is be really crafty with the ATC and special ops and just destroy everything. But even then, I kind of doubt that'll work out with all the Faros here. The only thing you can really do to be crafty is cloaking, and cloaking isn't an option when your opponent has half a dozen detectors, and detectors is his main army. So Perlox, Perlox is basically one, but looks like he's looking around trying to figure out where Chris has hidden his last few units because. There's no indication of defeat. Chris has not actually been defeated yet. He still has these units here. And Perlox has not found the Special Ops in ATHC. I'm not sure if even Chris is aware of the Special Ops in ATHC. And now Perlox is going for weaponry as well. He is... Well, I mean, he is just at the end game right now. Just trying to search out, figure out where Chris's forces are. He will find them eventually, but it's just... Now well, it's kind of a slow time now. Still, like I said, it's this is one of the important things about CISO is that their expansion power is incredible. They can just take over an entire map very easily, and it's ridiculous. And because of that, not using it is a real shame. And here we go. The Faros are going after the expansions, going from expansion to expansion. Perlox still not finding that special ops in ATHC, and honestly, I'm. Oh wait, no, there is actually a marine left. I missed that. There is a marine left. And Chris Worth is managing to rebuild somewhat. He has the resources to do it too. So Chris is actually rebuilding a bit. Though he has, by building RPs, he has made it clear to Perlox where his base is. Perlox will be able to see what's going on. Perlox is focusing his point in time, by the way. So he knows what's happening. And he can easily send, he is in fact sending the Faros a minute down from this to where the Marine is. The Marine, wow, it was right in the corner too, just hiding out. So he's sending it back to where the Marine is. And we'll completely destroy it. There's no way out of this. He's also getting legal class. He's just he's just spending all his money getting upgrades, because why not? And here comes the Farpod to come in and destroy that Marine. That Marine will not last long. I'm not sure if the Farpod is going to be chronoporting back. And yes, it is going to be chronoporting back. Going here, chronoporting back, and... It... Well, I don't even know if to find the Marine right now. See, the Marine in question... Well, I'm not sure where it is, honestly, because it's... You now it's kind of hard to see. But yeah, the Marine in question is... Well, it will be dead soon. I'll tell you that much, but... Still, Perlox is doing... Well, I mean, sorry, Chris is doing a valiant job of trying to take, stay out of death. I don't see how that's going to work out for too long, though. Perlox will be able to destroy this base. Will Has already gone the unplayable pass, really. And it's going to deal a lot of damage to it. So that Marine is likely dead. That base is likely to have never existed. And the Special Ops and ATC over here, they are being actually sent back to defend, so this will completely seal the deal. Once Perlox is done destroying everything else, the Special Ops and ATC are going to come in. They were the only thing that was keeping Pearl, or Chris roughly alive, that and the Marine. But even without the Marine, they would have kept Chris alive for a while. <clears throat> but thankfully, had the Marine, otherwise it would have been kind of boring. And it looks like the Green Time Wave is what's really going to be bringing in the damage, and I'm just going to double check what happened there before it falls off the timeline. This is not likely to really make a difference now, and whoa! Perlox really going in with the re porting. And it looks like there is really... Well, there's no Marine here anymore. Yeah, it appears that the Farpod has actually successfully managed to destroy that Marine, so there is no Marine anymore. The Marine is dead! Long live the Marine! <laughs> So, Perlox basically... Yeah, Perlox has won. Chris has lost. Chris has GG'd. Well, not even GG'd, just surrendered. So, hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.